Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. US 30 there is uh, just bouncing off potential resistance at 17.075. Uh, we had quite a big reversal there yesterday after uh, being down almost uh, over, over 100 points, maybe about 150 points there yesterday before we had that late rebound later on in the day. Still a lot of pressure uh, from China. Uh, obviously, you have the, the Hong Kong issue, uh, the Chinese markets um, feeling the pain a little bit, the um, Japan 225 coming off ever so slightly, albeit dollar yen is still looking um, quite sprightly, getting close to 110. Um, but the US 30 there, um, just bouncing around about the 17,075 level. And we do have some economic data due, due out this week, uh, which could nudge it one direction or the other. But this would normally be a hammer formation from a technical analysis standpoint, um, but we've not followed through with a, with a push to the upside there today. So obviously hitting um, all time highs, uh, that was there on the 19th of September um, at 17,366. We've since then come back down again, but it might just be a period of consolidation. We'll just have to wait and see. UK 100 uh, has obviously had quite some aggressive selling days um, in the last couple of sessions. Uh, obviously on Tuesday the 23rd was a particularly bad day. Uh, we're on the wrong side of 6666 right now, which is potential resistance. Next potential support is at 6581, and the technicals are not yet oversold, so that's indicative of the fact there could actually still be, from a technical perspective, could still be um, a move lower on the UK 100. So looking at Japan 225, uh, obviously it was at multi-year highs recently, so probably about six-year highs. You can see it was almost, it uh, actually broke above that uh, recent high point there from Jan 2014. In fact, I'm pretty confident I, need, I should go ahead and draw my next resistance level on there just now. Uh, we did just briefly poke our head above there to break that down below just now. Uh, next potential support at 15.987. Um, but dollar yen is probably where uh, a lot of traders still, are still looking, grinding ever higher to 110 spots 77. Um, it does look slightly overextended now. Uh, we do have a crossover almost happening in the MACD. And obviously the RSI and slow stochastic there are massively overbought, but not yet been given the um, the signal to sell. But the closer we get to 110, the more uh, I, I think people will begin to start to book their profits perhaps more aggressively. This breakout here has been, been, been quite fantastic from a technical analysis perspective, but we are getting closer and closer to that resistance. Um, the dollar index is at, is at one of the highest points it's been for some time. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Um, crude has had a bit of a bounce, uh, which is actually quite good considering the rampant strength of the USD over the last couple of sessions, but 95 spot 40 is the next potential resistance. Um, it might break above that, next potential resistance could be at 97 spot 64. Um, failing that, a reversal will bring us back down to 93 spot 95, and obviously you've got crude oil inventories due tomorrow as well. Um, but what's important about this is it looks like some sort of triple bottom formation right here, which would be quite good because crude has been languishing around these uh, low points for quite some time. Um, but I guess you, you do now have the added pain of uh, ISIS fighters encroaching around about um, uh, Baghdad, um, just around the outer ring there. The Shia militia are you know, getting ready for a potential attack on the west of the sea, and I'm sure that is finally waking up some people to the fact that the um, that crude oil uh, could be worth a, a, bit, a bit of a bullish move, um, depending on how that pans out. Moving on to gold. Gold still languishing at the uh, at the bottom of a month uh, multi month low, uh, quite close to to twelve eighteen. Um, obviously, that U.S. dollar strength, higher U.S. interest rate um, question is still uh, pressurizing gold. Next potential support is at eleven eighty, and uh, this, is, this is certainly consolidating around this level. We're in about here at twelve twelve eighteen. Um, but if we continue to get dollar positive and interest rate positive news coming out of the U.S., then uh, eleven eighty will be the next potential support to be aware of. So euro dollar, euro dollar is down at 126.61, which is its uh, 2012 uh, support level. And um, failing that, I think we have to actually have to go on to the weekly chart to find something lower. Um, it would appear, and this does look like it's kind of a little bit overdone, but look at the size of that potential um, gap between the next support level. So if 126.61 breaks, you're looking at 120, um, which is significantly lower for euro dollar. Um, but these moves that we've seen, um, we've not even looked at a, a potential cut in the Eurozone interest rate yet. So um, there still is a, a number of fundamental factors that could impact um, your dollar that little bit further. And uh, you, you do have the Fed coming out a lot, trying to downplay a potential rate hike in the US. Um, so that's not even really fully getting aggressive yet. So uh, your dollar looking vulnerable should we break below one spot 2660. Um, with the next potential support a long way away. So moving on to GBP USD, it's been volatile the last couple of sessions, obviously spiking up almost close to 165.58 uh, when Scotland voted no. 
uh, to independence, but now drifting a little bit lower again. That's more to do with rampant US dollar strength rather than a weakness in the sterling. Um, but one spot 62.65 does look to be strategic in the short term. That's potential resistance, and we're just trading slightly above that just now. So economic data-wise, um, we had a whole bunch of um, Chinese data overnight, uh, a whole bunch of PMI data, um, which actually slightly disappointed. Um, later on uh, today, we do have employment data um, for Germany, uh, and we do have uh, UK balance of payments and GDP data um, due at 11.30 a.m. If we fast forward on to Wednesday, um, you'll be able to see um, ADP private payroll numbers. That'll be very interesting, obviously. And then you've got the ISM manufacturing survey data. Uh, obviously, we're getting quite close to non-farm payrolls uh, as we get to that Friday there as well. So a fair amount of economic data. People will be looking at non-farm payrolls, obviously, as a, as a key eye for uh, US rates, and that will have a big impact across most other global markets. Um, join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.